Hi everybody. I wanted to expand on a video I did the other day about soul contracts and understanding soul contracts in your astrology chart, in the synastry chart between two people. Synastry chart is where you take the charts of two people and boom, lay them over top of each other to see compatibility. All right. I talked about that in this soul contract video, so I'm going to put that here so you can go check that out if you want to. I wanted to go deeper into the Pluto aspect. All right. I teach a, a whole class about Plutonic relationships versus twin flame relationships. There you go. Um, this is really important because I think I've definitely come across a lot of people who believe they're in um, twin flame relationships when actually it's Plutonic. And the difference is the Pluto energy uh, is transformational, just like a twin flame relationship, but it doesn't have the same goal. It doesn't have the same um, uh, energy about it, meaning that it's here to serve humanity in a larger way. Uh, we have a joint mission together. Pluto doesn't really have that. Uh, you don't have that joint mission together. And it's really the Pluto person is here as a teacher and it can be destructive. All right. We do talk about twin flame relationships and there can be destructive ways of being in twin flame relationships. That's a video for another day. Going to be doing a lot about twin, fl twin flame astrology coming up. But I thought I'd frame the conversation first um, by talking about Pluto. So you can kind of um, parse through your own relationship and see if you're maybe mistaking uh, a twin flame relationship for a plutonic relationship, because that can be really dangerous because the thing is you might stick around a whole lot longer than necessary thinking, well, it's my twin flame. Mm -hmm. Okay. And twin flames, uh, the astrology, I will talk in more depth about what I'm noticing in astrology charts of twin flames. And that's definitely another video for another day. But uh, I will, if, if, if and when those videos are made, here you go, there's a playlist. <laughs> okay. So let's first talk through a bunch of different ways about Pluto, a bunch of different um, experiences of Pluto and things you need to know about Pluto in your chart and in the chart of a synastry reading, which is the um, compatibility between two people. First of all, Pluto is karmic energy. It is most definitely past life lessons or things that weren't done, things that weren't completed in past life. Here they are again. It doesn't mean necessarily that the same soul is showing up to teach you the lesson that you needed to learn in the past life and didn't do. However, it can be true that you have a past life connection with this person and they are here to avenge some kind of um, hurt or pain from a past life. The Pluto person, Pluto as a planet is a karmic transformational energy. And so when you're looking at a synastry chart, if you're looking at someone and you're seeing OK, a synastry chart will show you your planets and then the aspects, how it's how it's pinging, or how it's being activated by this other person's planet. If they have a ton of Pluto and you have, you know, your personal planets and stuff, that's a plutonic relationship. OK, and first thing I want you to know is Pluto is karmic energy. It doesn't always mean bad. I think we use the term karmic as meaning bad, but it is something that needs to be it needs to be righted. It needs to be balanced. OK, and so those those karmic lessons can come through and you can see them in a synastry chart with Pluto. So Pluto is karmic. First thing to know, um, especially if the way someone else's Pluto is talking to your planets is in a very tight orb, meaning zero degrees, zero degrees, one degrees. Orbs are how tight those planets are uh, in a conjunction, an opposition, a square, Right. We'll talk about those in a, in a minute. But how tight is that? How powerful is it? If it's zero degrees, super powerful. OK, so you need to know that now. Um, Pluto aspects when you have with somebody else, because everybody has Pluto in their own chart. So Pluto inherently is this energy of transformation, but it becomes karmic and more toxic, uh, potentially uh, with another person. OK, they are here to teach you. It's like the dark underlord <laughs> here to like here to like teach you some lessons in a pretty transformational, sometimes difficult way. Pluto aspects in synastry can be abusive. OK, and because there is an imbalance of power, 
Pluto is the planet of power. And that person in this in this um, energy or in this trans or uh, sorry, in this aspect is the one with the power. And they also don't care as much. They might feel obsession or jealousy or something like that. But it's always the personal planet because personal planets are super close to us. Sun, moon, rising. That's a, that's a point, not a planet. But sun, moon, rising, Mercury, Mars, Venus. Those are your personal planets. Uh, North Node and uh, Ascendant are uh, mathematical points, but they are still personal to you. And Pluto is more of a generational planet. So it's out there. It's the furthest away. I think they even don't even call it a planet anymore, right? Like it's like poor P Pluto way the heck out there. The person with the personal planets is the one that's going to feel the abuse, the one who's going to feel the uh, abandonment, the one that's going to feel... Uh, the balance of power being unfairly tilted away from them. Okay, so you should know that. And worst thing about it, in my view, is that the Pluto person is all subconscious. They don't know that they're doing this. They don't know that they're engaging in this. All they know is they're feeling drawn to it. They might be very unconscious about this dynamic. Okay, so... The next thing I want to talk about, it's not to say that every plutonic relationship is toxic, um, but the potential is huge for it to be toxic. So the two people involved, the level of uh, emotional maturity and conscious awareness is the key. That's why I'm saying like the Pluto person can be super unconscious about this and the pl personal planet person um, can be so impacted that it just feels like, why are you being so crazy? Like the Pluto person can be like, talk to the hand. It can really feel devastating um, when this comes across. And so you might even take conscious action to mitigate this, balance this energy if you're emotionally aware, if the other person's emotionally aware. Um, and you might even decide to walk away from this relationship if you see this in a sinistry chart. It might be something that you're like, you know what? My lesson here is boundaries. Okay, so let's keep going with Pluto here. And like I said, Pluto is so far out there that um, Pluto is seen as a, um, a generational planet. And the bummer about this is that the Pluto person may not feel as strongly like I was just saying. This person may be, you know, kind of um, feeling like you're, you're crazy. Okay, and they might even say that to you. The thing to know about this, another thing to know about this is Pluto aspects in a sinistry chart is karmic. It is fated, destined. You are destined to meet this person in your life. They are someone who is on your path and the power and control connections are so deep that the inner learning can be profound. The healing can be profound albeit coming from maybe a negative place, right? It's like they move you just light years away from where you are. So this is potential. Like I said, if you're very conscious and aware, if you're very emotionally mature and the other person is too, you know, you can consciously see what the connection is, what the, you know, how it's speaking to each other in a sinistry chart. And we'll talk about that in, uh, soon in another video. But all I'm looking for you right now is to be aware that this person can, you can feel like this person has dark energy. Um, maybe not the minute you meet them, but if you get into a dating scenario and you have sex with them, if you're intimate with them in any way, that's when it's activated. So you may not immediately fall in love with them. You may, especially if you're more emotionally mature and conscious and aware, you might be like, huh, there's something about this. You feel drawn to this person. You feel like you have to um, work this out or you have to overcome a thing with this person. And your battle here is to learn and not squash your own light or become codependent or inhibit your own path in any way. Your job is to learn from this. So if you can become a little more, I mean, good news, darling, if you have um, an aspect with another person, a plutonic aspect, 
uh, where their Pluto is activating or in aspect to your sun, moon, or any of those personal planets, um, you might just be in the sign of Aquarius or Gemini and an air sign. You might be able to be woo, more objective about things. And that's really good news. Okay. That's really good news. Uh, but if it's in a tight orb in like a water sign, woo, that is going to really um, show you that things might have to go through some kind of dark period. You might have to go through some kind of really dark night of the soul. This could be triggering a dark night of the soul. Uh, and that is definitely not for the faint of heart. And I'm sure a lot of you know that. So the tighter the orb, I said this a little while ago, but I think this bears repeating, the tighter the orb, the more powerful and even dangerous this can be. All right. So I'll get into the individual um, aspects in a second here. But you want to know that if something is in zero degrees or one degrees or two degrees, there's a potential for danger because Pluto person is about power and control and the personal planet person is the one who feels like activate, uh, like I can't get away. I can't get away or I can't get close enough or I can't may feel like stalkerish may feel like, um, that every, you know, they're just like all over you energetically. Like you can't separate yourself from this and that can be dangerous. It can really take you out of your own creativity, your own path. And yes, there's a purpose to it for a learning purpose, but it can really take you low. So I just want to make sure that, you know, if you start dating somebody or if you um, have thought somebody was like this in your path, get a synastry reading, please, because then you can see if this was at play, if this had impact on you. And then maybe you'd be able to put this person in the category of, oh, plutonic karmic energy. Um there's lots of passion. This is why people can uh, believe that this is a twin flame. There's lots of passion. It's very dynamic energy that seems awesome at first, but this can flip, flip into toxicity at a moment's notice, right? You're going along. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. The Pluto person may strive for more control and domination. And they're not even really sure why that's happening, but it's because they can. So the, the person who's Pluto, the more unconscious they are, the more unawake they are, the more they are going to be, it's almost like an addiction. Okay. And if this person is also an addict or someone who has an addictive personality, watch out because this can real, this person can really play a lot of mind games with you. It can flip on a dime where everything was fine. And then two seconds, all of a sudden we're in this dark place of, you know, run or chase or pull, push me, pull you all of a sudden, all of a sudden it can flip into power and control. Okay. There's no unconditional love here. That's the difference with uh, twin flame and this, there is no uh, unconditional love here. That power, that Pluto person, that Plutonic person may um, not have a lot of feeling. And that can, especially if it's in an air sign, if their Pluto is in an air sign in their birth chart, but also if it's in an air sign together, you may feel um, that you are mentally connected. You may feel that you have a lot of um, telepathy together. And that's true, but this person, this Plutonic person may use it for domination and control. All right, so the key of this is how strong is this? Um, I believe that, like I've talked about the orbs and I'm talking about like where it is in your chart and what kind of sign it's in, what kind of energy it's in. But I do wanna say to you that my philosophy about astrology is that it's energy to be balanced and worked with. Now, Pluto, tower energy, <laughs> um, tower is something that shows up in your life when you haven't been healing a particular thing. You haven't wanted to work with a thing. You haven't wanted to look at it. You haven't, you've been holding on to an old way of doing things. So the universe brings plutonic partners, karmic partners, tower energy across your path to blow you up. So to me, this is one of those energies. Like I feel like everything in astrology has a remedy. Okay. 
And plutonic relationships, the remedy may be being emotionally mature and walking away from something or learning to work with it in a in kind of a, a contained kind of way. If you get into a love relationship where there's sex involved, where you're, you know, when that happens, when intimacy happens, you're exchanging cords, you're really doing a lot of energetic commingling. And that's going to make it much more difficult to kind of untangle and know where you are. Okay, so uh, the, the strong, powerful energy of a tower, of a, a plutonic energy, uh, a person, um, there is definitely a lesson here. And there's something that you have to learn. This is not something to be avoided. Um, this plutonic person comes across your path. If you run away, it'll find you another way. Okay. But if you stand in the light of this and say, all right, I see it. I'm aware of it. I'm looking at it. Guides, help me to understand why this person is on my path. Help me, you know, do a lot of self-work around this. Um, integrate only with this person to the extent that you uh, get a sense of what the lesson is. What are the things that's triggering in you? What What's being brought up when you're, ex when you're around this person? What is bothering you? What is, what is waking you up in the middle of the night? What is making you feel um, dominated? What is making, what is, what is it? Okay. And that's up to you to really understand that piece for yourself. When you are awake and you are conscious and they are too, then there's a, there's a potential that you can work through it together. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because I really feel like these Pluto, uh, aspects in a synastry chart can really turn you upside down. And it's important to know that they're leveling things. They're taking things away from you, taking things out of your life that are built on sand, that are built on toxic things themselves, that are built on family stuff that needs to be healed, right? It's not like, oh, this is a supremely stable thing that's going on in my life. It's something that has, you know, 100% of it is good for me and blah, 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 blah. Not really. It's here to get you to shine a light on the toxicity, on the unhealthy things that you have that maybe you're still holding on to. Codependency is a big is a big one. OK, that shows up in a lot of these kinds of relationships. All right. So now I'm going to go through some aspects that are more dangerous than others. <laughs> the Dangerous Soulmate is the title of this video. So I want to live up to that name and talk you through some of these um these aspects that are really, uh, you really need to see and pay attention to and don't take them lightly. All right. So we're going to talk about Plutonic or Pluto aspects in a synastry chart. This is in a synastry chart, meaning two people lay over top of each other and see the compatibility. A composite chart is the chart, the astrology chart of the relationship itself. So when you see Pluto aspects in synastry, that's what we're going to be talking about now. They can have impact on one person, but not on another, the Pluto person. But when you see them in composite, this is something that the relationship with each other is teaching you both. OK, so if you look at a composite chart, you uh, may or may not see any Plutonic uh, aspects in there, even though in the synastry chart there is because the reason for that is, well, it's the lesson learning is not balanced. It's not teaching you something and teaching the other person. In the synastry chart, you still have Pluto, Plutonic aspects. You're like, why doesn't the composite chart have that too? Or why doesn't it show Pluto that much? Well, because the learning is not balanced. The learning is meant for you if you're the personal planet person. If you're the Pluto person, this is kind of calling on you and your integrity to say, you know what, this might, this relationship might not be a good idea. And so it's good for you to look at it and in an emotional, uh, mature kind of way, go, uh, I do not want to be that kind of destructive force in someone's life. So do yourself a favor. If you see that you're the plutonic person, because, you know, it's not that if you're the personal planet person in one relationship that you can't be the Pluto in another, you definitely can. And probably are, okay? Because, you know, 3D Earth is not for the faint-hearted. We have a lot of karmic 
soul contracts to work on in this life. And some of them come through the um, through the lens of Pluto. So just because you're like the personal planet person here doesn't mean you're not the Pluto person over here. And if there's a lot of Plutonic in a synastry chart, but nothing in the composite chart, that can still happen. All right, I'm gonna go straight to double jeopardy in this, <laughs> in this video. I'm gonna just talk about the squares, okay? Pluto square to personal planets and what each of them can mean in a relationship. Uh, in another part, in another video, I will talk further about conjunction. I'll talk about oppositions, trines, sextiles. But in this particular video, as I'm kind of setting it up, I want to go to the straight to the most potentially toxic, okay, which is the square. The square is the most potentially toxic. A square is 90 degrees squares right from one planet so pluto is square to your moon or pluto is square to your saturn or something like that or your 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 moon is square to their pluto um it shows a stumbling blocks building blocks it's up to you how you handle this but this can be tension it can be difficult circumstances this is one of those relationships where you might feel it right out of the gate that it's like, oh God, everything is so complicated. Everything is so difficult. I do believe that it would be a very short period of time between dating this person and feeling this energy. Some of the other uh, conjunction, uh, opposition, sextile trine, some of those can be years before you feel the energy. I feel like the square comes right at you. So that's why I'm doing it in this first video. So let's first talk about the sun square Pluto. Again, person one has the sun, person two has Pluto, okay? So it's a square and it's in a tight orb, zero degrees, one degrees, two degrees. After that, it gets much weaker. It doesn't mean that it's not big, but uh, it's not as strong. So the planet person might not really be as driven down a road of the of darkness as they can be if it's zero degrees that's super powerful the sun square pluto so if you are the sun person think about this the sun person is your person the sun it's your personality it's your it's the way of experiencing life it's it's light it's the energy of you and how you show up pluto is the subconscious self it is darkness okay so it's almost like an eclipse you could feel like like you lose energy. You could feel like you, you know, the passion that you have with this person becomes possessive um, one way or the other. The, the, um, the Pluto person can become super jealous. They can, they can um, really uh, bring out parts of your personality that you're like, oh my God, I didn't even know that was really in there. And this person can also take you down the roads that you don't want to go. This is like, this is like that friend in high school who was always going, yeah, sure, let's skip school today and you can come with me. And you're like, oh, I don't really want to do that, but okay. Like it can take you down some roads that you would never have gone down if it was your choice alone because Pluto is so powerful. You can think about this as how will your light shine in this darkness? And the lesson here is they are really pushing you to be your most authentic self. They're pushing you to have boundaries. They're pushing you to shine your light. Okay, the strongest. It does help you to uncover weaknesses in your own presentation of how you're being in the world. It can um, get you to fight for who you are. Instead of this, this also can be a tremendously codependent um, placement where the um, the Plutonic person or the Pluto person just sort of subsumes you, kind of um, you completely become enmeshed with this person. Uh, for example, if you are somebody who really is, you know, you love gardening and you love cooking, and you have your animals and everything like that. And all of a sudden you are in this Plutonic relationship and all of your hobbies just go away. You don't do anything. You feel compelled to be um, doing what they want to do. All of a sudden you find yourself watching a lot of Marvel comics movies. <laughs> Not that that's dark, but it's like their thing, right? It's their thing. You just like lose yourself in this person and they are totally in control. So 
you find yourself being unable to extricate yourself and you spend whole weekends um, doing being in their kind of lair and it does feel dark. OK, not that this person is dark or evil or anything like that. But when these en energies get activated e in each other, you're seeing sort of the dark underside of this person and they're trying to bring that out of you. Right. Like they're trying to bring the bad girl or the bad boy out in you. And boy, it works. And you're like, why? I don't want, I don't want this. This is not not fun for me. I feel like I get to the end of the weekend. It's kind of like coming out of a movie theater after spending like a whole Saturday afternoon eating like sweet tarts and um, and popcorn and Dr. Pepper. And you're like, Mwah. like, it's just it feels gross to you. OK, it feels gross to you. It doesn't it can feel a little bit dangerous. It can feel a little bit exotic and it can feel a little bit like loosen up. Like, why are you so uptight? Especially if you have if you're like sun in Sagittarius or in any of the signs that are very kind of lighthearted, um, you can have that. You can have that. If you have your son in Scorpio, I'm feeling like you might be able to handle this. OK, you might be able to see this sooner than someone who has uh, their sun sign in a lighter energy. So this is really about detachment. OK, it really is about um being able to be yourself and not get enmeshed with this person, with the, with the Pluto person. All right, let's talk about their Pluto square your moon, okay? This is a relationship marked by codependence and no boundaries, okay? Because your moon is your intense emotional world. Um, it is your emotional needs. It's what your partner gives and receives to you. It's what you want in terms of relationships, you know, this is emotionally and sexually very intense relationship, pure imagination, deep romantic connection, but there's no boundaries. There's nothing that this reminds me of nine and a half weeks, that movie, right? Like there's nothing that she wouldn't do to curry favor with this man. There's nothing she wouldn't do. And this can because become serious problems. Um, for two people who are emotionally immature, this can dive you into a world of losing your sense of self, losing and your your needs and your wants, your desires are almost completely driven by what the other person is willing to give you. And it's chaotic. It's harmful. Uh, this is where control is mistaken for love. So if you have a. Um, if you have that wound from your family, take a look at your Chiron. Take a look at the wounds you have. Uh, Chiron can kind of give you an in because the moon is moon is a little bit more um, your feelings and needs. But Chiron can show you those deep wounds. And I I, I have a, a, a deep um, intuitive sense, though I'm not I haven't proved this astrologically or in any way, shape or form. But I have this feeling that Chiron kind of gets yeah, like this person kind of sticks their stick and they see your weakness. They see the things that are your um, vulnerabilities. This person sees them. OK, this is another thing, another connection that's kind of like a, a like a love addict. It, it could turn you into a love addict. The moon person, the codependence is super strong here. And what's worse is that the Pluto person may not care. Yeah. OK, depending on the rest of the chart, you may see that the that the Pluto person is ramping up this uh, dangerous um, toxicity based on their own needs and your needs aren't really part of the equation. So beware, the stronger the orb zero degrees moon square Pluto drawn to danger is how I think about it. So before I move on here, the one thing I do want to say about Pluto square sun and Pluto square moon is this person, because sun and moon are really who you are, um, this person can really push you to learn who your authentic self is, what your wants and needs really are, albeit in a super negative way. Um, but the gift of this, if you can call it that, the gift of this is you're fighting for your, your authenticity. You're fighting for what you want and and need and you're 
your understanding that boundaries are the thing you need to most work on. So it highlights what your lessons are. And the more you can see that, the quicker you can see that, the better off you're going to be. Now, followed closely behind is ascendant or your rising sign. This is the social personality. So there's some similarities to your sun sign. The sun is really who you are, um, your body, mind, spirit, and all of that. The ascendant kind of overlaps in this, but the ascendant is really how you represent yourself, how other people experience you. Your sun sign can be how you experience you, but ascendant is how other people see you. So when you have um, uh, someone's Pluto square your ascendant, ascendant is also the window to the past life. So you can really feel an intense karmic past life connection with this person. Uh, the ascendant um, is, is very much a window into that. But this person sees exactly how to fool you, exactly how to criticize you. That is the wound, most wounding thing that they could possibly say, okay? Um, they are somebody who, who sees exactly how to manipulate you, okay? They really are able to do that. Um, this is a super unhealthy dynamic because it can deeply crush your public persona. The thing that you show up to as other pe for other people, it can call into question how you're, how you're even being in the world. You can feel super insecure when you have this Pluto person undermining who you are or who you appear to be. And they can kind of always call that out as like super fake. And that's not true. Your ascendant is a window from a past life into this life. And so the Plutonic person, since this is a past life karmic connection, is somebody who basically uses your weaknesses of a past life or whatever has floated into this life against you. All right. It's very toxic. Um, the ascendant person also, and I don't know that this is true for sun and moon, but definitely the ascendant, the rising sign is quite vulnerable to a lack of awareness because this is the moment this is the ascendant sign is really showing you the moment you stepped onto this planet who you are to other people so you're standing right on top of it you may not feel that this is how you show up to other people um but the plutonic person the pluto person sees that and like can really undermine that can really be someone who um destroys your reputation with other people uh, through their control of you. They can, they can, this would be somebody who wants to meet your family and insists on going and getting really drunk or high before you do it. And if that's not really how you show up to your family, that's going to be like, what the hell is this? It can cause people to worry about you. They can be like, oh my God, what is going on? Which is great because you might need a lifeline if you're dealing with this type of person. There's, again, there's a lot of passion, a lot of attention, uh, but the Pluto wants to own you as property. If you, are, uh, if you are the ascendant person, the Pluto has hidden motives. They never talk about, right? It's like you're standing right on top of this connection. For some reason, the ascendant is more unaware than the other points or the other planets um, because the power of the Pluto person is knowing how to twist it around, knowing how to fool you, knowing how to make you seem like you're, this is gaslighting. This is a hundred percent gaslighting. And it's also um, methodically trying to destroy your relationship with your family and friends and they become stronger in the family and friends, like the family and friends like them, can like them and can feel like this is all your fault. So this is gaslighting. The ascendant, the Pluto square, the ascendant is deeply psychologically manipulative. It is, can separate you from your friends and family because you showing up differently to them and they don't know who you are all of a sudden. Um, the ascendant can feel like they're making all of this up that it's really not that Pluto person. It's really you. It's your fault. This is how I behave with this person. It's all me. But, um, and especially if your family and friends are like, you know, they're so wonderful. Why are you acting like this? Why are you being so crazy? So 
it's not that the ascendant, um, the ascendant, the ascendants, uh, to me, the worst part of this is you might not see the true nature of this for a couple of years. So two to three years before you go, oh, 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 I don't want this. But by then you might have married this person or you might have children with this person or something like that. So uh, synastry charts, super important to do when you're first starting to date somebody. And you might have somebody who can't give you the time or time of birth or anything like that, but do it the best you can because these kinds of connections, especially for empaths, for people who are very um, open and everything can be horribly destructive, horribly destructive. It just feels like there's something not right here, but the ascendant person, square Pluto, is somebody who just can't see it for quite a long time. Okay, are you ready for Mars? Because, I don't know. <laughs> Mars, even though that ascendant one really sounded awful, I wonder if Mars isn't worse. Mars has the potential for being very dangerous in terms of violence, in terms of domestic violence, in terms of a lot of different kinds of violence. So because Mars is ego and Pluto is power, there is a massive pushy, controlling, dominating, um, you know, uh, they push your buttons on your ego, uh, you know, you're so overblown, you're so this, you're so that, trying to break you down. Uh, the, you might go at this person, okay? Especially if you have your Mars in a sign that is fiery or even swords. Like if you have your Mars in an Aquarius, uh, in Aquarius or something like that, you could use um, uh, mental tactics on them and you could spark a dangerous interaction with this person, Okay. Whether you mean to or not, you're just defending yourself. But the Pluto person is the more the more uh, a person is unconscious, the more dangerous this is. I'm just uh, no sugarcoating here. OK, so this Pluto person has has maybe had some um, this may be a past life connection of victimization, maybe a past life connection of violence, murder, anything like that. Like, sir, I'm not even making this up. <laughs> not even. I'm just trying to get you to see how challenging this particular uh, square is. So the strength of these two signs, okay, of these two people. Um, so if you have, like, if you have Mars in a very strong place, like in Aries, right, where Mars, so there's something called, um, let me see if I can find it right now, exaltation. And every planet is exalted in a certain sign. They're in detriment, meaning kind of neutral in a sign, in another sign. And they're in fall in a, a third sign, meaning they're very weak. Okay, they can really be, um, I'll just read you this. Each sign has a planet where it's exalted, where its energy is pure and elevated to the level of perfection. A sign complement is where a planet's energy is positive. So this, this exaltation is very positive. If a planet is in the opposite sign of exaltation, then it's in fall and dishonor, okay? And the detriment sign, the middle sign, is when a sign is opposite its rulership. So it can be fairly negative. It can be weak. Um, it can be repressed. So, you know, I'll put a chart in the um, description box about this so you can see where your particular planet is. Uh, in your own personal birth chart and where you can see where their Pluto is. It's important to know that because in the synastry chart, um, you'll kind of get a sense of it, but it'd be good for you to know just your own personal, especially where this Mars is. So my Mars is in Capricorn and, you know, Capricorn um, is uh, exalted in Mars. So I have very strong Mars and that could be dangerous if someone has a very strong Pluto, okay? And um, I'll put that chart in the description box so you can go through it for yourself. But this particular square, what really highlights it or makes it dangerous is because neither person backs down. That's why this can resort to violence. Neither one of you is going to um, capitulate. Mars is the god of war. And Pluto is 
the destruction. So I wouldn't mess around with this. If I saw this in a chart uh, with potentially somebody, there can be, you know, eruptions, fighting, bitter resentment. You can be dealing with the ego. You can be dealing with their ego, your ego. This is all about the need to be right. Okay. There's just this powerful energy. Um, the Pluto person drives the ego of the Mars person to the point of explosion. And when you have this sense, if you are both very unconscious about this, this can show up early in the relationship as healthy competition. And then it's not so healthy anymore. You really want to go at this person. OK. Um, and they know exactly, especially sexually, they can. This can be a situation where you're competing where you're at a party or you're out together and they flirt with someone then you flirt with someone and it, it could get really ugly. Okay. Jealousy can erupt. Um, it can be very, um, strong sexual competition, strong sexual attraction. There's no doubt about that, but this can go off sideways pretty fast. So just be mindful of that Mars placement. So the Mars square Pluto, um, can, the positive thing, the lesson to be learned is your own power, knowing your own power that can come of it. But, you know, by way of something very difficult, this is definitely warrior energy. Um, this is about your self-confidence or their self-confidence. Um, it's a dance of resistance and not really a positive one. So I don't recommend this, even if you are very conscious. Um, let's go next to Mercury square Pluto. Now, Mercury is your mind, right? Mercury is your ideas. And this can really turn into unhealthy mind games. So there may not be um, powerful sex or anything like that. It could be. You could have that. But it's more an energy of the mind. It's like someone is really a Svengali. If you don't know who that is, that's someone who really used their power to control other people uh, through the mind. Okay. And through their wit and charm and, you know, it really is something that you, f you might find this person extremely interesting. You guys talk for hours and hours and hours and hours. And, you know, the communication here is really, really good in the beginning. And this person may uh, try to push you um, to change the way you think about stuff. But in general, they could start criticizing you about your logic or lack of logic. Uh, the person, the Pluto person wants total control. Charming, right? Um, they will impose their beliefs on the Mercury person and they'll want the Mercury person to make quick changes because Mercury is fast movement, right? So Pluto will expect you to turn on a dime. Pluto will expect you to listen to their ideas, listen to their thinking, and then there, there should be the um, expression of that in in life. So if they try to change your mind in terms of your political affiliation or something like that, they will expect you to go down today and change, you know, what party you're affiliated with. They will, you know, it'll be demanding. They will be somebody who's like, oh, fine, you're not standing up for what you believe in, right? They're really going to twist you around. This is relentless mind games, mind games and they want fast results. OK, they're not settling for you to kind of think about it and all that. Mm -mm. They want to mold your mind and your thinking in their image. This this um, I kind of have seen this in the past, just my, in my own travels. Um, a friend of mine had a much older husband who was a, a, um, a, philosoph a philosophy major, a philo major philosophy professor, uh, someone who was a Ph.D., uh, someone super sharp and everything like that. And they literally tried to mold and change how the younger person. And it was kind of like, you know, I think about this, uh, my fair lady. That's pretty plutonic. He changed her and you might think for the better, but was it? I don't know about that. Uh, this can be older dominating, you know, people who have a lot of brain power, people who are college professors or PhDs or MDs, people with a lot of learning capability, a lot of education, 
can really try and mold another person and it can be uh, very controlling and dominating and um, not authentic to you at all. All right, let's get to Venus because this one, um, I feel like a lot of people have this uh, that really believe that it's twin flame, okay? And it's Pl Venus square Pluto. So your Venus square there, Pluto. Uh, this is about obsessive love. And this is definitely love that hurts, okay? There is no unconditional love here. There is none of that. Um, the passion and intensity are off the charts and so are the control and manipulation. This is literally like feeling crazy in love. The Pluto can present themselves. Uh, you can get all the way into the relationship very quickly because of the obsessive nature of it. Um, but all of a sudden they really do show up as possessive and obsessive and even damaged. Okay. And there can be this sense of um, what it, they could hurt themselves or they could hurt you. Like there's this really emo piece of this that is very secretive. This is a lot behind the scenes, especially if the Pluto person is unconscious, really unconscious. It can be extremely passionate and romantic. Um, but the secrets abound in this on both sides. Okay. Cause Venus wants to be adored and chosen and you may hide your true self because this is so, you know, Romeo and Juliet. It's, it's so, such a big deal. This is a mutual obsession. Now, again, the Pluto person may not be aware of all of these elements. They could be acting super subconsciously, but they will feel pulled to, um, dominate. It's definitely obsession. This is like driving by your house to see if you're home and, and things like that. Uh, the Venus square Pluto, uh, connection, the positive side of this is it can really help you see your own power in relationships. It can really help you see the enmeshment and, but it could leave you shattered. Okay. The karmic relationship about this definitely, um, can be a super dark time and it can show up as jealousy. Jealousy is really strong in this, in this Venus square Pluto. The obsession is really strong, very abusive, controlling, selfish behavior. Okay. This relationship will definitely change you. And this person could um, separate you from your family. They want you all to themselves. It could be a very isolating experience. So just be mindful of that. So one of the other things to know about the Venus square Pluto is this may be a really tough one to end. You might be hard for you to end this relationship. You might go back to it a couple times, year after year after year. This could hang on and, you know, kind of stick to you. Um, so it's, you know, you're really meeting your darker side, your darker self with this Venus square Pluto aspect and beware because this could really become an abusive relationship. So those are the personal planets, the ones that are closest to you. I am going to talk you through Saturn square Pluto and Jupiter square Pluto too. Those are the interpersonal planets, the social planets, um, and the themes can be bigger than just you. Um, and I think you'll see what I mean. So we'll talk about, let's talk about Saturn square Pluto first. Um, this can definitely be a life changing um, uh, connection because it can push you into doing, um, you might be attracted to kind of non-traditional things. It might not be all that bad. I feel like Saturn and Jupiter uh, might, uh, square Pluto might be a little less toxic than these other ones. But it's definitely an intense mental connection. There's no question about it. Um, the connection between the two of you may be constantly trying to reinvent itself. Okay. You might uh, put a lot of time and effort into this relationship. You want to make it work, right? Saturn. Um, you are feeling like you're the one who's having to make it work. Okay. In many ways. And the Pluto person can be a little bit lackadaisical. Like it's not, doesn't seem like they're super duper connected to you. 
uh, definitely trying to reinvent the wheel uh, in terms of romance. And because Saturn, all right, so the Saturn, Saturn's planet wants you to achieve your fullest potential. Saturn in your chart says, how can I achieve my fullest potential? Pluto wants to shed all the things that don't serve them. So there's a kind of a like a collaborative sense of we're changing our lives. We're doing something really important here. We're making some changes that are going to be felt, you know, generationally. I mean, there's this kind of big thinking about it, right? But they both want that, but it, the other one needs to do the real changing, not really me. Like I'm just kind of like a little bit changing, but you are the one that really needs to change and evolve. And I'm just kind of like mostly evolved and doing fine. And so there's things, I, little things I want to um, work on myself. It's mostly as it relates to you. So if they are, if the controlling nature of this particular square is someone who controls by inaction, or controls by um, not doing the thing you want, then you focus on their behavior. You're focused on them changing. And you think you're doing something really good, like you're, like you're you know, freeing the world for democracy, or you're, you're uh, like you're really, you know, this is like a, this is something that's gonna um, help all of humanity or something along those lines. There's a stubborn aspect to this, like you don't wanna change how that person wants you to change. So both of you are like nitpicking at each other. Like these are the things you need to change. You think you need to change this? I'm sorry, you need to change that. And there's a stubbornness about like a kind of like a, uh, who the hell are you to tell me, which is correct, how to change. But then there's this like, no, it's you that has to change kind of feeling, all right? The power drive in this is a little bit exploitative, explosive sex connection, but exploitative. OK, um, Saturn may also be uh, too buttoned up and the Pluto person pushes them to do things that are outside of their comfort zone because like this is how you need to change and how you need to evolve. And the Pluto will feed off this as an exhilaration. They will really um, uh, get off on the idea that you're changing for them, but they, but it's not going to like improve the relationship at all. Okay. The Saturn person will see the challenges of this relationship as something to fix. And the Pluto person will see the challenge, the challenges of this relationship as exhilarating. So they're not going to change anything. They just want you to kind of like do the work of, of let's, you know, let's reinvent this and all of that kind of stuff. It, it could be really depleting and exhausting. Okay. The Saturn person will learn to loosen up, which is maybe a positive of this, only to exert their dominion uh, in the bedroom, right? They will decide that that's where they're going to make the change in the other person because that's where they can have uh, dominance. And the Pluto person will learn to control or learn that surrender is a form of control. And so there's this like weird thing of like who gets to change who, like you kind of get lost in that a little bit, okay? So that's um, that Saturn square Pluto. And I think that could be a very exhausting connection. And then Jupiter also, Jupiter square Pluto. This is ego. This is intellectual. Again, like we talked about, uh, one of the other squares was about, oh, Mercury, was about changing your mind and everything. Jupiter is how you're plugged into big beliefs, ph philosophies, not just ideas or smaller thinking this is about them wanting to change you from being you know wanting you to convert your religion wanting to um philosophically change the way you experience the world it's a bit bigger than mercury okay i talked about the political party thing in mercury but um and political parties certainly exist with jupiter there's no question about it this jupiter square pluto can be a little bit like a cult it's like I'm exploiting your sense of belief in something so you may believe it may not even be about religion or philosophy or, or um, political stuff at all. It's that you have a strong belief in something in your life. You maybe you believe that people are inherently good. Maybe you maybe you believe that everybody's like you. Maybe you believe and this is going to get knocked down by this Jupiter person. You are going to finally be able to see 
that other people don't operate like you and are not like you. And that can be a real awakening uh, for you if you're the Jupiter person. But the Pluto person um, brings that out of you through competition. Um, they can always push you and exploit you in front of other people about your, um, your, your silly optimistic beliefs or your uh, sense of um, hope, sense of optimism. They want to show you how misguided that is. Okay. And so it becomes an ego power game. And again, all of the things I've said with the other squares is true with this too. So you just need to know that um, Jupiter square Pluto, they can really show you things about the world that you haven't wanted to look at because you aren't drawn to them or you aren't feeling called to be in this situation, but they may bring you into some really rough uh, situations to show you the degradation, the human degradation and how people, you know, completely, um, you know, lose, like, let's go to Vegas and gamble your mortgage away. Let's go to and see other people who are doing it too. Like, this is how people live. This is what people are really about. You're just too optimistic and too misguided and everything like that to believe any of that. And that can really bring you to a place of, of like depression almost of like hopelessness and, and things like that. So I just want you to know that that's, um, that's a bit of a rough sled. All right. So now we're talking about Neptune, Uranus and Pluto, and that's not really a thing. Okay. When we have Neptune, Neptune, Uranus and Pluto in terms of power, it's like they move too slow. They're too far out there. You're not going to have them transiting, right? Pluto, it takes 247 years to go around the full 360 degree um, chart, right? Um, this is the 360 degree chart we're talking about. And Pluto moves so slow, it, it's not going to impact Pluto and Pluto conjunctions. Also, very common. If you have people five years either side of you, you your Plutos are right on top of each other because Pluto moves so slowly. So don't really worry about Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto itself, uh, being in conjunction Pluto Pluto because it's not powerful. Okay. It's not really a thing. This with the personal planets conjunction to Pluto, that's the thing to pay attention to. All right. So before I end this video, and I know it's been a pretty long video, but I want to give you some other caveats to look at in your own chart that will help you understand if you're in a vulnerable position. And I talked about it just a little bit ago about the debilitated, about planets in exaltation and planets in the in fall, planets that are, are in detriment and things like that. How strong, all right, if you have Venus, if you have Venus and it's square to someone's Pluto, how strong is your Venus, right? Is it, pl is it placed in a sign that makes it powerful? Okay, that's what you need to look at. Um, if it's weak, then that's extra bad. So just give it the like extra strength points. If you have a week, whatever the, whatever your personal planet is in aspect in, um, in square to their Pluto, if you have one that's in a weak position in your chart, it ain't getting better with that P Pluto person's arrival in your life. So just so you know, it's even weaker than you think. Um, the second thing is look at your own um, birth chart do you have a lot of aspects to Pluto in your own personal chart? Just you, not the synergy to any, or synastry to anybody else or even the composite to anybody else. What is Pluto doing in your own chart? And are you aspect, is your Pluto aspecting any of these things? You can look at this as a personal thing too. If you have Pluto that's aspecting your Mercury, you may play mind games with yourself. If you have Pluto square, right? Pluto square to your sun, then you may have this dark light kind of thing going on yourself. So look at it in your own chart. Go through these again and see how you might be um, uh, squashing your own light or bringing transformation about in your life. OK, look at that in your birth chart, not in a transit chart or anything like that. Just in your birth chart is Pluto highly aspected in your birth chart, meaning there's a lot of talking to other planets, especially squares just like we're talking about in this video. If you have um, oppositions or conjunctions, which I'll talk about in another video in more depth, that can be conjunctions are when the planets are right on top of each other. So that can be really good or really bad. That can be more explosive or it can be 
uh, kind of weak, depending on what sign that is in. Okay, if you have it in, if you have Pluto Venus conjunction and it's in a sign that's weak for Venus, but strong for Pluto, then that Venus person is going to be extra depleted or you just your own personal chart, you're going to have a hard time uh, understanding what it is you want in love because you're constantly big footing yourself. So there's going to be a little bit of that. So pay attention to in your birth chart, how Pluto is working just for you. And um, just know that wherever you have Pluto in your chart dealing with yourself, you're, you're playing mind games with yourself. You're playing power trips with yourself or you're very um, power trippy when you come to other people. If it's really strong Pluto, if you have really strong Pluto. Now, when things are in trines and sextiles, there's kind of a sweet energy here. So I'm not really going to talk about that with Pluto because that makes it really weak tea. And who cares? Right. No, it's lightly transformational. Oh, well, I just want to keep you from not getting into these relationships that are going to bowl you over, suck your energy dry, drain your bank account, drain, drain everything like we don't need that. OK, so look at your natal chart, look at your birth chart and just see the potential for drama in your own life. Do you have strong Pluto? Do you have strong Mars? Do you have strong some strong things in your own life? And if Pluto is talking to those planets that can be a lot of drama in your own life. So the more conscious you are of these connections called aspects, uh, it's activating energy. And you have to take them seriously because this these are the things that can create huge challenges in your own life. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope that was helpful for you. I'd love to uh, hear what you have to say about it. Please drop a comment. If you like videos like this, please like this video so other people can see it. And also let me know because I'll make more videos I feel like the Twin Flame Astrology, as we get through the month of August, I'm going to be doing more videos about Twin Flame Astrology. And this is part of it because a lot of people mistake these relationships for Twin Flames. Okay. All right, my loves. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.